So, it's that time again for me to cover the volume extras for My Hero Academia Volume 36. And there is a fair amount of new information in this volume that I'm going to be going over pertaining to both Dobby, Shoto, and potentially what's going to be in the next volume extras. So, let's just dive right into it, but first right after this. <laughs> Hey guys, how's it going? It is your boy, Mangamandro. I'm here to once again cover the volume extras for My Hero Academia. This time, we are covering the volume extras for volume 36. And from what we see with the volume of this cover, this is going to be focusing a lot more on both Shoto and Dobby when it comes to some new information that we have on them, as well as just seeing some very fun art from Horikoshi, as well as the mangaka for Team Up Missions, the My Hero Academia spinoff. So let's dive right into it and see what new information we're going to be getting from this volume when it eventually comes out. For starters, like I was saying, the cover of this chapter is amazing. A lot of this information has been out for a little while and I did wait a little bit longer to see if any more new information would be coming out. But from what we see, this cover just looks amazing. We get to see Shoto with his phosphor ability all over his body, which we're going to learn a little bit more about that. But we pretty much get to see them just come in conflict with one another and just this very visually stunning page cover. So yeah, really enjoyed the cover. And from there, we pretty much just get a few more images of some very interesting and very beautiful art. We get some art that looks very much realistic in the case of like, what if these characters were like real people? as well as a table of contents that shows what chapters are actually going to be in volume 36, starting from chapter 351 and ending at chapter 362. As well, we get another panel or another cover of the big three of UA in just casual uniform just hanging out, and we're going to get a little bit more of this type of art in this volume, and it's very beautiful. But going from some of that more beautiful art pieces, we do get a small piece of a sketch that Horikoshi had for this volume, where we actually get to see Shoto running back to UA. And this was something that we kind of like predicted or just kind of knew was going to happen because we saw that Shoto and the rest of Class 1A are inside of UA and they were able to accept Shoto. But we do get to see that Endeavor and Hawks were still left out in the rain. So it just shows that they are more accepting of Shoto, but not accepting of both Endeavor and Hawks. And like I said, this is pretty much just a sketch of what happened when Deku returned to UA. But now we're getting a little bit more into Shoto and his new ability of Phosphor. And how when it comes to his design, we get to see it a little bit more in depth and how it's actually supposed to be portrayed in the manga. And how you have one side of his hair being frozen while the other side is being risen or is rising from the heat of his ability. And how it's supposed to have him be looking at a camera so that we can get a very good look at it. But pretty much what is explained that when it comes to this new ability as Phosphor, or should I say Flash Fire Fist Phosphor, that even if he goes beyond his output limit, he can maintain a stable temperature, however it is physically exhausting. And this pretty much means that if Shoto decides to go past his own limit and output more than his body can actually handle, that he could still maintain a very stable temperature, which is necessary for Phosphor to exist. And this kind of leads to a pseudo explanation for why Ida was right next to Shoto after that final attack, and that he was just physically exhausted from using Phosphor, and that potentially he may not be able to fight Dobby immediately because he would be physically tired or physically exhausted. So that is some cool and new information that we are learning about Phosphor, but there's also some new information that we are learning about Dobby and his ability. Because if you didn't know, spoilers, Dobby is Toya, and we do get an explanation of how Toya's body is able to react, even though he has a body not well suited for his quirk. And it's explained that Toya's body is more resistant to cold, but that this does not mean that his fire resistance is zero because you have this resistance meter and on this meter you have a spear that has most likely the kanji for fire on it. and how it's shown to be something like this where we see that there's a bar that shows his fire resistance and that we have a small area where it is showing that if he goes past this point that's where the fire will begin to burn him and as we can see it's a very small area that is shown that would cause him to burn himself which is explaining why when he uses even small amounts of flames his body gets immediately burned so yeah 
as we see where the arrow is pointing, that's like the point where he can use his quirk, where it won't harm him, but most likely than not, that means that he really can't use his quirk effectively if it's that far on the actual meter. So it's interesting to see that we are getting a better understanding of Toya's body and how it reacts to his quirk and that even though he's unable to use the fire, it's not that he has no resistance to it whatsoever, but that it's so minimal that he pretty much could just not have a resistance to it at all, but it's cool to see that he actually does. And once again, we get it like another sketch that pretty much says, okay, now it's time to take the camera back over to UA. There's no time to rest as we just get a sketch of both Mina and Kirishima saying this as well. And here we get once again, another sketch where we actually get to see Jiro, Hawks, and Tokoyami. And pretty much what they are saying is that Hawks apparently took both Jiro and Tokoyami to go eat at a fancy restaurant. They had a reservation at five, but they arrived too early. So it's just a fun comedic sketch that Horikoshi drew and it looks very cool. I especially just liked how they look and how it's supposed to be a fancy restaurant, but they really look like their characteristics or their personalities. And I just really like this page. But here's where we get to something that we kind of knew, but it's great that we have it more written in stone. And that is a map of where everyone is in location or perspective to one another. So basically we just have a map of the entire battleground where we get to see where the characters are within proximity of other characters. We see that when it comes to Troy, it's a lot closer to where the flying UA barrier or coffin is, which makes sense because that is where UA was located and Troy was closer to UA. But we also get to see that there are individuals such as Saro, Ojiro, as well as Sato that are actually closer to where Deku is than I thought. And we also get to see where or how far Toga, when it comes to both Uraraka, Froppy, and Gang Orca are in respect to the other areas or the island of Japan and how far away they are with that retrospective in mind. We also get to see how far away Dobby versus Shoto and Ida is in comparison to where All For One and Endeavor are fighting, which is cool. But you also get to see how close uh, they are to characters such as Mount Lady, Kirishima, as well as Mita against the individual that killed Midnight, how they are closer to where All For One is. And we also get a general idea of where Central Hospital is as well, where Spinner is fighting against both Present Mike, Kota as well as Shoji and how it's probably the furthest away from any of the other battlegrounds besides uh, where Toga is and where All For One and Mount Lady are. So it's just cool that we get a more better understanding and perspective of where the battles are taking place on this country of Japan. And so we have another uh, sketch where we do have Horikoshi given an explanation for a comment that he made in the author comments a while back and how he says that he was curious to see what's the difference between a normal cut and a cut with vibrations so he bought a high frequency cutter but it ended up being delivered after he finished the chapter as we get sort of kind of what Horikoshi was imagining when he put this panel of hawks cutting through the sound vibrations that eventually broke all for one's helmet. And this ties into an author comment that he had about how he was purchasing a high frequency cutter and that it's so that he could get a better idea of how to draw this panel, but it came too late. So he just went with what he thought was most likely going to be cool. So it's cool that we get a little bit more of an insight and introspective on how Horikoshi is drawing and what inspiration he actually draws from when he's creating and drawing these panels. So it's cool to see that a little bit more in the volume X. And speaking of the volume extras, something is revealed about the big three in respect to when they were supposed to graduate from UA. And how generally speaking at UA, the graduation ceremony takes place at the end of March. And how it seems that graduation dates vary from year to year and from school to school, and that some may happen in February, how early. So this is very crucial information that we needed to know because when it came to when the first war started, it started at the end of March. And we were unsure about whether or not certain students, specifically Nejere, Mario, as well as Tamaki were supposed to graduate. And how in reality, they were supposed to graduate at the same time that the raid took place, but because you know, everything went to horribly wrong, then everything went to chaos, they were never able to have a proper graduation, which we were told in one of the chapters. And this is kind of the explanation for why that was the case. 
So it's cool that we really got that information in this volume extra, but we also get once again more sketches and more drawings of Horikoshi drawing these characters and how they're just really interacting with one another. We get small comments from all of them, just enjoying themselves, them just having fun and really showing their characters in this one sketch on this one page. And I really do enjoy it. Also, Yu Yu is also here, which makes sense because Nejire is there. Wherever Nejire is, Yu Yu is not that far away. Also, another page that we have reveals the names of the business course students that we saw a few chapters ago and how these characters actually appeared in volume three of My Hero Academia. And then from left to right, we have Futo Nagashirakun and how he is heavily influenced by Best Genus, which makes sense because he has very tall hair. That's probably where the inspiration comes from. Next, we have Kamako Masusan and has apparently nerves of steel and how she's the mood maker. So we actually get a confirmation that she is a girl. So that's cool. And then we have Ranodo Keage-kun and he's just very stoic. So yeah, we got names for the business course students that we saw, I believe in like chapter 350-ish. But we also get the individual that was actually chastising the individuals of the business course, more specifically Futo, and how her name is Maina Furasu-san, and how she's apparently a part of the support course as well as Hatsume's classmates. So it's just cool that we get to learn a little bit more of these smaller characters in the story, learn a little bit more about the personalities and the connections to the other, just other aspects, the other aspects of UA. So I really enjoy seeing this and gaining this information and can't wait to get more of it later on. And yeah, we're pretty much getting to the end of the volume extras. Pretty much everything else is just very cool artwork. We get more artwork from the author from the spinoff manga of Team Up Missions. And we just get one page of Akiyama Sensei who drew a special illustration for the commemoration of the fact that Team Up Missions is about to reach volume four. So it would be cool for us to check it out. And the drawing is that of Shimage, AKA Kanoko, AKA Komori. And Frankly, of all the class 1B members that they could draw, I'm glad that they drew her because she's probably my favorite female character from that class. Also, she looks very cute in this dress, even though it's supposed to be a summer dress, even though they're technically in fall, so, or we're in fall, so, mm, it looks cool and I really like it. And from there, we get another illustration where we get to see uh, Shigaraki with all of these hands with a comment of whenever Shigaraki appears, I pray for the well-being of Hirokoshi Sensei's hands. And this is coming directly from Yoko Akiyama. As well as we get a very cool look at the cover or the inside cover for Volume 36, which is just a very young endeavor. And yeah. That's pretty much it. We get another uh, cover page or of the back cover where we get to see Jiro and she looks very beautiful. As well as we get once again, another uh, page where uh, Horikoshi is thanking everyone for buying this volume and that hopefully everyone is going to be doing okay and that the sixth season of the anime is starting and how he wishes good luck to the villains, good luck to everyone, good luck to the heroes with a teaser to what's going to be going on in the next volume where he talks about how the next volume, Ed Shot's weird spiky hair will collapse. Look forward to it as we get a image of Spinner screaming. And if you read the most recent chapter of My Hero Academia, which is chapter 369, you'll understand what this is going to be referring to and that we actually could get more information on Spinner alongside Ed Shot. But yeah, that's pretty much all of the extras that we have for volume 36 for My Hero Academia. So let me ask you, what was your favorite piece of artwork from the sketches that Horikoshi put in this volume? And what did you enjoy most about the volume extras for volume 36? Leave your thoughts down in the comments down below. Leave a like on the video if you liked it and subscribe to my YouTube channel if you want to see more content like this. Do all that cool jazz and hopefully I'll be able to catch you in my next video. Goodbye! Huh.